inevitable, the scent of bitter almonds always reminded him of the fate of unrequited love. Hola, hola, guys. It's Roxanne. Welcome back to my channel. Um, or hello, if this is your first time here. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about my thoughts on Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, this story is about two young kids who fall in love in a village, and they... They share their love and they express their love through writing letters to each other. Um, they know very little about each other. They have different social statuses, um, but they do fall very madly in love. And then after a series of events, the woman, Fermina, their names are Fermina and Florentino, Fermina decides that she no longer wants to be with Florentino, she no longer loves him, and ultimately marries a doctor called Dr. Dr. Urbino. And so it's about their lives, it, it takes place over the span of about 50 years, and it begins with the death of the doctor, and Florentino shows up and essentially proclaims his his love for Fermina and is completely certain that he's going to be able to win her back and be with her despite the 50 odd years that have gone by and despite the fact that it is the day of her husband, her late husband's death. So it begins there, sharing us the, the death of, of the doctor and then it goes back to their youth and then t tells us the story and sort of brings us back to the present and then the end it continues past the point of the doctor's death so it's not really told in a linear way um, because you sort of go back and forth between the three characters you, you are told a certain a certain series of events with the married couple and then it goes back and tells you what Florentino was doing around that time or it'll tell you what Florentino was doing and then go back and tell us about the the doctor and Fermina. Um, I ended up giving this, to be honest, I, I still struggle with what, I, what rating I feel that I want to give this book. I go between a 3 and a 4, anywhere between that, 3.5, 3.75, 3.25 um, and and there are, there are different reasons why I really can't make up my mind about it. I will talk to someone and they'll share their thoughts with me and I'll sort of reconsider and maybe want to lower or make it a little bit higher. So I'll start by talking about the things that I loved and then I'll talk a little bit about the things that I didn't love um, so much about the book. Ultimately, this the writing of this book was absolutely amazing to me to the point where after I was done, I, I would continue to think about his writing style and I would want to be sort of be reading it again because it was so pleasant for me to read it's very poetic and it's very little lyrical but it feels very effortless it doesn't feel as though it's forced um or it's pretentious at least to me it didn't there, there are a lot of very long descriptive paragraphs that do a great job of setting the scene for you and describing the setting and describing these characters and their development and their surroundings and so that i really really loved and i really enjoyed and after being done with the book i still kept thinking about it and so that is probably the biggest contributor to my wanting to give it a high rating just because i've i've read few books where where i thought the writing was as as beautiful and and so that's that's part of the reason why i wanted to give it a high rating i also loved how original the the plot was to me i mean you have these two kids and they fall in love and then randomly they decide they decide to not be together and then it's 60 years later the guy shows up on the death of her husband and is like I will still love you. Let's get back together. And so I thought that was very interesting. Gabriel Garcia Marquez is known for having pretty out there, original, interesting plots. And this one, I didn't think um, straight straight away from that at all. I thought it was great, and it was very interesting. And I all and I, the whole time I was really wanting to know and trying to guess for myself if they would end up together or not. I feel like I have a hair in my lip. Um. <laughs> And, and so I was, I was sort of trying to, to read the characters and would they end up together and wouldn't they? And um, 
despite whatever it, it ended up happening, I knew that I would have a very strong opinion about whether I thought that was right or wrong or consistent with the characters or not. And so that was very interesting and that was very entertaining throughout the story. And so those are those are the two main main things that I loved about the about the story. I also loved that we got a lot of commentary, I felt, on how patriarchal the society was and how marriage affects women especially. Um, there are multiple instances in which we meet uh, widows and and it's sort of repeated how they are shadows of who they were when they originally got married. They have given away parts of themselves in order to maintain the happiness of a marriage and to keep their husbands happy and I thought that was incredibly sad but I thought that was a very strong I thought that was a strong statement to make and, and a good critique to make. It's something that I, I find interesting to read about and I, and I enjoy when, especially coming from male character, male authors, because I do feel like we get that a lot from, from female authors, but not, at least not that I've read too much from male authors. So I thought that was, that was really nice. And I wonder if it's, if it's insightful, if it's, something that Gabriel Garcia Marquez also felt. I don't know if he was married or what, um, but I thought that was interesting. And you see how, you also see how marriage affects the other single women in the community. Fermina got a lot of hatred and a lot of, of critique from the women that were also in the village because they, she was of a lower social status than the doctor and so she, went up in this in in the social scene and social status because she married him and so you see how that affects the other women in the in the village and in the community and how much they hate her for it and she gets sort of hate mail and everything because they desired that because they they too saw that the only way that they as women were going to go up in the social status was through marriage and they critiqued her a lot for it so that was very interesting to see as well you see how you're told multiple times how Fermina and a lot of some of the women that that Florentino has an affair with he has an affair with 622 women by the way throughout the 50 years that he's waiting for for Fermina to to become single and for him to be able to to be with her again and through some of the I still think I have a hair on my lip um you you're told a couple of times how they treat the men like like children and so that shows um difference in in i guess in what in what Gabriel garcia marquez feels their maturity levels are and i thought that was very interesting and and funny almost also to read about there were also some what i felt were magical elements to to the story and i don't know if that was on purpose if he meant to have some sort of magical realism in it or not i should, probably should have researched it but to me it it had hints of that and in in the way that florentino loves and in the way that he perceives his love and his future with fermina there's a wonderful line that says that florentino has an infinite capacity for illusion and you really see that throughout the way that he goes throughout through his affairs and goes through his years always thinking about fermina and seeing her out in public and thinking about their future together he never for a second considers things like she might die before he's able to have a second chance with her he might die he might fall for someone else she might not want to be with him at all he doesn't really consider these things until very near to the point where where the, he will have a chance to to a chance to be with her again so he goes 45 almost 50 years without wondering about the different possibilities that would not end up with him being with her once more and so that infinite capacity for illusion really felt very magical to me when i was reading it and again i don't know if that's just me reading into it or if that was on purpose but i that was something that i also enjoyed um you i also got that in fermina there is this these couple of chapters where 
she is we we learn about her sense of smell and how she is able to tell exactly what her husband was doing and she's able to instantly realize when there's something different about her husband due to his smell and so every night she will take the dirty laundry and she'll smell it and almost unconsciously she just does it naturally um just out of habit and one day she wakes up and and feels like if there's a di completely different person next to her because of the the difference in his smell and i won't tell you wh where that leads but it I, I i felt that was another sort of magical aspect to it because obviously our sense of smell is pretty strong but i, I feel like it's taken to another level in this book and and that was that was interesting and and great to read about so those were those were the things that i that i most enjoyed and why i sort of want to give it a four out of five because all of those were really all of those aspects made me enjoy the book a lot and made me think about the book and still make me think about the book and so um those those would be the main reasons why i would be tempted to give it a four out of five stars the reason why i am tempted to give it lower than four and and not five like i'm sure many people would give would give this book was for a couple of of things there is a there's a lot of sort of subtle racism we've woven throughout the story um when you talk about when they talk about immigrants coming from other islands or servants or whatever there is this um i don't want to say passive aggressiveness but there you i felt a bit uncomfortable sometimes when i would read about them because there was a sense of almost superiority and obviously they're all in in servant roles so that that was um that was something that sort of didn't sit too well with me, but probably the biggest thing that I had an issue with and that would always prevent me from giving this book a five star rating was I felt there is such a blase attitude towards rape and pedophilia in this book. That it was very blase and it was romanticized and I felt like none of the characters were ever punished or or had to experience any sort of consequent negative consequences for their actions um many of the men that florentino many of the women that florentino has affairs with uh are very young some being very very young schoolgirls, and and you see how it affects them being with s someone who is much older and you see how these are very impressionable girls and so they feel very strong things towards Florentino and they don't realize that it's rape and that he's a, a being he's being a pedophile and I just did not I did not like that at all it didn't sit well with me at all and it could be because of the time in which it was written but I don't ever want to feel like I'm giving my stamp of approval for things like that even when I'm reading books that were written a long time ago um when things like racism was uh, was much more uh, i don't want to say prevalent because obviously it's still a prevalent thing but you know if it was just because it was written in the 40s or 50s doesn't mean that i'm gonna be like oh yeah i'm gonna just check mark that as being okay as racism for being okay because it was written in the in the 50s it's still gonna be very uncomfortable to read about it and it's still gonna be something that i'm against and so that was jarring and i i didn't enjoy that at all and <clears throat> like i said he doesn't really ever have to face the consequences of that and it happens multiple times and he experiences it and he does it and some of the other women that he has affairs with there's one where i think she no longer wants to sleep with him because she has fallen in love with the man that raped her and so she she she's like tell so and so that the woman that he raped at this time in this place is waiting for him and she's in love with him and i'm just like what no no that's not okay and and so but it, then it's just sort of mentioned and then we move on and we don't really hear from her again and nothing ever really happens and he doesn't seem to think about it in any certain way and that that just did not i did not like that at all um i 
I love the character development that we get from both of our main characters, but I did not like Florentino. I thought I, I thought he was pitiful. I thought uh, pitiful, pathetic. I didn't enjoy him as a character. I, which is not to say that I didn't like reading about what happened to him because I was still curious to see where he would end up and where they would end up uh, possibly together or not um, and so I was still curious but it did but I, I didn't like him because of the things that he did and because I felt um, that the, some of the things that he did were manipulative many of the things that he did were manipulative and I just I, he, he was just I feel like if I met him in person I would think he's a slimy nasty person nasty man that I, I wouldn't want anything to do with and so um i didn't like him and then the last thing that i really did not like and this is um i think more subjective than the other things is that i didn't i didn't personally like the ending many people do obviously that's why i say it's it, that this one's very subjective but i didn't i didn't think it was consistent with the characters i won't say what the ending was because I don't really want I don't want to ruin it for anybody but I didn't enjoy it the sun is in my face um I didn't enjoy it I didn't think it was consistent I thought it it made me sad honestly because I I really think that there would have been um it would have made a bigger impact if it had ended differently I think I might have been convinced to still give it a four stars even 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 no, i'm not a five stars because like, like i said i don't want to feel like i'm giving the behavior described in this book sort of my approval but i would have been less flexible with my rating less um tempted to give it like a three or a 3.25 if the if the ending had been different um but I mean, it is, it is what it is. It, the ending still has series that it makes, but I just didn't think it was, it was, um, it was what I what I would have written it to be, or what I would have wanted to see. But again, you know, that's that's all that's all subjective um, to each independent reader. So um, another thing that I forgot to say that I really did enjoy was Fermina's character. I like she was spunky. She was unlikable at times. She was very stubborn and very headstrong and those are always characteristics that i enjoy especially in a female character so she was great to read about mm, florentino not so much but um but yeah i mean those are my thoughts on on the book like i said every time i talk about it with someone who has read it I, I, my my rating sort of wants to change a little bit um i don't remember what i left it on as good I left it as on Goodreads. I think I've changed it a couple times. So, but yeah, that, that's what I think about it. I do want to read at least one more Gabriel Garcia Marquez and see if it's if it's different, especially with the attitudes towards sex and rape. And um, by the way, rape is not about sex. That's not what I meant. But but about things like that, I want to see if it changes or if it's consistent. And if it's consistent, I probably won't be reading any more Gabriel Garcia Marquez just because why when there are so many good books out there that don't have that attitude towards those sensitive topics so we'll see but if you've read it please let me know down below what you think if you think you want to read it also let me know uh thank you so much for watching i hope this was um a good review i hope i was able to make myself clear this is just my second review so i'm still practicing <laughs> um thank you for watching please connect with me on social media i'd love to talk to you guys and have a wonderful day Bye.